one who's got the problem. The Bible says the heavens declare the glory of God. It's interesting. Evolution theory has the sun and stars evolving before the earth. The Bible says God made the earth before the sun and stars. Everything about the evolution theory is backwards to the Bible. Every single thing, absolutely backwards. These theories don't match. Everything's backwards. The Bible says man brought death into the world. Evolution says death brought man into the world. The Bible says God created man, and evolution says no, man created God. These theories are polar opposite. People say, couldn't God use evolution to create? Well, he could have, but it's not the God of the Bible, that's for sure. The God that would use evolution is cruel, wasteful, and retarded. It's not a God you'd want to pray to, that's for sure. Cover more on that on video 7 of the Blue Series of Tapes back there. The psalmist said, when I consider thy heavens... By the way, heavens is plural. We get into that more on video 2. He said, when I consider... Kids, you do yourself a favor once in a while to shut off that TV and go outside and consider the heavens. Go see what God has done. The psalmist said, while I was musing, the fire burned. The word muse means think. Think. The Bible uses the word twice. Think. Now, English is a pretty interesting language, you know. A theist is a person who says he believes in God. If you put the letter A in front of a word, it means the opposite. So an atheist is a person who says he does not believe in God. Muse means to think. You got it. Ah, muse means literally to not think. Did you know we've got entire parks where you can pay money and go do that? They're called amusement parks. Mm -hmm. A place to not think. He said, when I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon, the stars, which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him? You know, it's interesting. A person that spends his time considering what God has done is just not impressed with what man can do. And some of you parents ought to go home and look in your kid's bedroom. And if what you see all over the wall are pictures of sports heroes, you listen carefully. You're training your kids to meditate on what man can do, not what God can do. And his brain, his thinking process is going to be about that deep. You know, the depth of his understanding is, wow, he threw the ball, threw the hoop. Oh, <laughs> who's going to care in a thousand years? Who's going to care in five years? Does anybody know who won the stupid bowl, Super Bowl five years ago? Does anybody care? Doesn't matter, does it? All those grown men out there fighting over that one ball, and they can all afford to go buy their own. <laughs> I mean, it's not sinful. It is just dumb to pay a guy $5 million to carry a pig bladder down a cow pasture through some plumbing. I... <laughs> It's not going to last, folks. Think about things that are going to last forever, like what God has done. Okay, Meditate on that. The Bible says, speak to the earth and it shall teach thee. The earth is like a big magnet. Now, magnets always lose their strength. The earth's magnet has lost 10% of its strength in the last uh, 150 years. That means, of course, it used to be stronger since it's getting weaker. And it cannot be more than 25,000 years old. Just the Earth's magnetic field decline limits it to less than 25,000 years, and that also means carbon dating can't work. I'll give you a few examples here. The lower leg of a mammoth <clears throat> dated 15,000 years old, but the skin was 21,000. One part of a mammoth is 29,000 years old. Another part's 44,000. You talk about a slow birth. Cover more on carbon dating on video number seven and all the serious problems with that. But the textbooks will say, well, yes, the magnetic field's getting weaker, but that's because it's reversing, okay? It's a pattern of reversals. No, there are no magnetic reversals in the magnetic field at the bottom of the ocean. We cover that on video six. This is all part of another theory called Pangea. How many have ever heard of Pangea before? That all the continents used to fit together. Well, I bet they didn't tell you they shrank Africa nearly 40% to make them fit, did they? Did they tell you they took out all of Mexico and Central America? Senor, que pasa? Donde esta Mexico, Panama, Costa Rica, Guatemala? And they don't, they don't tell you what I think ought to be obvious to a kindergartner. <clears throat> Did you know, if you take the water out of the oceans, you will notice there is dirt underneath. People say, Hoven, do you think the continents were ever connected? I say, well, what do you mean, they're still connected? 
I mean, like right now, you know, it's just the low places are full of water, that's all. What do you mean, were they connected? Hello, they're still connected. <laughs> what a dumb theory. We cover more on that on video number six about Pangea, uh, what's called the Hovind theory. But the Earth is spinning about a 1,000 miles an hour at the equator, but the Earth is slowing down. The Earth actually slows down about a thousandth of a second every day. The Earth slows down. Astronomy Magazine ran an article in 1992. They said, Earth's rotation is slowing down. June will be one second longer than normal. We will have a leap second. Leap second? Yep. They have to have a leap second about every year to year and a half. Because the Earth is slowing down. Now, kids, this is going to be complicated. So listen carefully. The Earth is spinning, but it is slowing down. So that means that it used to be going faster. How many can figure this out with no help at all? Four, five, six, seven, nine. Okay, good. Well, if the Earth is only 6,000 years old, this is not a problem. I mean, it was going a little faster. Adam wouldn't notice. He didn't have a watch anyway, as far as we know. But uh, some of these guys would like me to believe the Earth is billions of years old. Man, if you go back billions of years, you're going to have a problem. The earth would be spinning pretty quick. Get up, go to bed, get up, go to bed, get up, go to bed. You'd never get nothing done. Centrifugal force would have been enormous. Man, the winds would have been 5,000 miles an hour from the Coriolis effect. And you want me to believe the dinosaurs lived millions of years ago? I know what happened to them. They got blown off. No, they did not live no millions of years ago. Uh, the Sahara Desert has what's called a prevailing wind pattern. The wind almost always blows the same way. This creates a serious problem. The hot air comes off the desert, kills the trees next door, and that area becomes desert. The process is called desertification. You can read about it in an earth science book. Sahara Desert has been studied very carefully. They did a long study on this and said, you know what, folks, the Sahara Desert is probably about 4,000 years old. That's when it started growing. Egypt used to be fertile land all over the place. Okay, well then, I have a question. If the earth is millions of years old, why don't we have a bigger desert someplace? Why would the biggest desert on the planet be less than 4,000 years old? Well, <clears throat> I have a theory about that. Now, here's my theory. I believe about 6,000 years ago, God created everything. 4,400 years ago, there was a flood. Now, it's pretty hard to have a desert under a flood. you got to admit that would be tough, okay? So the desert couldn't start growing until the flood water went down. So I predict, based on the Bible, the biggest desert in the world will be less than 4,400 years old. <laughs> it is. Wow, maybe the Bible's right. You know, when they drill into the ground, sometimes they hit oil. The oil's under incredible pressure in some places, up to 20,000 pounds per square inch. It'll come squirting up out of the ground, <laughs> like a big zit. 20,000 PSI. Well, the guys who study the rocks on top of the oil say, you know, it just can't handle that pressure for more than about 10,000 years. I know the weight of rock supplies pressure, but the, the pressure in the well is greater than the weight of overburden. They say it should have cracked the rock and leaked off in, in less than 10,000 years. Okay, well, then I, now I've got two questions. Where did the oil come from, and why is it still under pressure? Hmm. Well, most scientists agree that oil comes from organisms that are squished, they're changed by heat and pressure into oil. They learned in 1971 how to make oil in 20 minutes in the laboratory. In Australia, they've got a treatment plant that takes sewage sludge and turns it into oil in 30 minutes. There's a factory in Turkey that just opened up, a factory in Texas that takes turkey guts and takes pressurizes them and heats them and turns them into oil. They said in the article, we duplicated what Mother Nature does, but what Mother Nature took millions of years to do, we do in about 30 minutes. Sinclair has the dinosaur as their logo. They say dinosaurs turned to oil. Yes, boys and girls, they mellowed for 80 million years. I don't think so. I have a theory about the oil. Now, here's my theory, okay? I believe about 6,000 years ago, God created everything. 4,400 years ago, there was a flood. Okay? In that flood, lots of critters and people drowned. They got buried by the gravel and the rocks and the mud and the sand, and it got pretty heavy after a while, and it squished them <laughs> into oil. So the oil is down there today from the people and animals that drowned in that flood. Which means if you...